Hi, I recently bought a DJI Osmo handle and a Zen Musex 5R camera. I've been facing two main issues with this setup. The first is that in the proxy files, audio and video are not synchronized. The second is a random gimbal drift. I believe these problems are unacceptable for this uh, price range. The DJI Osmo handle is a control unit optimized for ground use that can mount a Gimbal Plus camera system, which could also fit an inspired drone. The Zen Muse X5R is a camera that can record 4K RAW videos. The camera has a Micro Four Thirds sensor with an MTF mount and is also mounted on a 3-axis gimbal. I'm using the default DJI MTF 15mm f1.7 lens. The X5R camera records raw videos in 4K DCI on an SSD hard drive. Videos are saved as a sequence of Cinema DNG files. Simultaneously to raw recording, proxy files are also saved into a microSD card. Apparently audio can only be recorded in the proxy files. Here is the audio input. For recording the audio I'm using the Osmo DJI FM15 Flexi microphone. According to this website, the fastest microSD on the market at the moment February 2018, is the SanDisk Extreme Pro V30. I got this SD card from Amazon for 43 euros. The card is indicated for 4K video recording. It's rated for 90 megabytes per second sequential write speed. The Osmo system can be wireless controlled from an Android or iOS device. It can also be controlled with a cable for a faster video feed, although I noticed some delay. This is the control app. The Osmo is running the most recent firmware, version 1.4.0.70, which was released on the 9th of May 2017. We first calibrate the Osmo. Calibration was repeated every time a battery was replaced. We format the SSD and the SD cards. We set recording to 4K DCI and 23.978 frames per second. As I said before, many Osmo users have reported issues with the audio and video not being synchronized. What I'm trying to figure out with DJI is if my Osmo system is faulty or if this is an issue that affects any Osmos. Let me briefly illustrate my setup. On the right we have a Canon C200 where I record reference video plus audio with a Video Mic Pro. The frame rate is set to 23.978, which is the same frame rate of the Osmo. I also record audio separately with a Zoom H1. The subject of the videos is a metronome app. A metronome is a device that produces an audible beat at regular intervals. This device includes synchronized visual motion. Basically the app will blink and sound at the same time. I also use a Slate or Clapperboard app. A Slate is a device used to assist in uh, synchronizing video and audio in uh, video production. So let's start the tests. I start recording with these three devices, the C200, the Zoom H1 and the Osmo. Then I clap the slate to synchronize all the videos. The X5R RAW files were exported with a DJI camera exporter running on a Windows 10 system. This is the recorded data. We have a folder containing the raw X5R data from the SSD card, a folder with the X5R proxies from the SD card, a folder with the C200 raw videos, a folder with the C200 proxy videos, and a folder with the audio recorded with the Zoom H1. We import the X5R proxy and our reference, the C200 proxy, in Premiere Pro. Both sequences have the same frame rate. We create a new sequence from the C200 proxy. Then we import the X5R proxy into the sequence. We try to synchronize the two videos with the automatic synchronization tool in Premiere Pro, but it fails. This means that we need to synchronize manually using the most precise option, that is the audio signal. We use the audio waveforms and we synchronize with respect to the clap. These are the aligned clips. While the audio is well aligned, the video is not aligned. We can see this, for example, when the slate closes at the beginning. In the X5R proxy file, the slate closes earlier than in the C200 file. This happens because there is a delay between audio and video in the X5R proxy. As the audio is later than the video, after we align the C200 and the X5R footages, 
The video of the X5R will be anticipated with respect to the video in the C200. We can estimate the delay by looking at the clock in the slate. The delay at the beginning seems to be about 150 milliseconds. We can quantify better if there are drifts in the audio and video in MATLAB. As I mentioned before, there is a drift in the gimbal position. Obviously that drift shouldn't be there, otherwise what's the point of having a gimbal? We need to fix this before doing a quantitative analysis. We open the sequence in After Effects and we apply Stabilize Motion, Position and Rotation. For this we use two trackers. As you can see there is a huge drift. I save the tracking coordinates for these two tracking points in an Excel sheet. This is a plot of the first tracker trajectory. The camera was at about 70 cm from the target. The drift in pixels along the X direction is about 100 pixels. The drift along the y direction is about 60 pixels. This is a plot of the second tracked trajectory, which obviously looks like the first tracker. We then go back to Premiere Pro where we have the stabilized sequence. We create a new sequence from the X5R proxy and export it as a sequence of JPEG images. The duration of the video from Premiere was 3 minutes, 38 seconds and 10 frames. This means that I should expect 5242 frames or JPEG files. So in the folder we have 5242 frames. The original audio was recorded at 48 kHz. We export the audio as a waveform file. Let's have a look at the audio first. We want to see if there is any irregularity in the audio. We first check the audio recorded with the Zoom H1 as an example. We move to MATLAB. Here we wrote a script for audio analysis. We import a Zoom audio file. The sampling rate is 96 kHz. Audio was recorded as stereo. We extract one channel. The time vector in seconds is obviously given by the sample number divided by the sampling frequency. We then consider a portion of this file and plot it. These peaks correspond to the beat of the metronome. The two intermediate peaks correspond to the slate. In fact, we clapped uh, twice. We check the distance between two peaks to set the parameters for peak detection with the find peaks uh, function. We extract the instance at which the beats occur. This is the differential of the previous plot, which tells us that there is more or less a constant gap between each beat. It also tells us that uh, the gap does not really vary over time, as shown by this trend line. The BPM was 60, meaning that the beats are spaced 1 second. The median is in fact 1 and the standard deviation is 70 microseconds. Next we check the audio we just extracted from the X5R proxy. Here the difference is that the sampling rate is 48 kHz. We repeat what we did before. We find the regular spacing between the beats. The average is 1 second and the standard deviation is higher than the one calculated before, 264 microseconds. Let's have a look at the video sequence now. First of all, let's make sure again that we have the right number of frames. In the folder we have 5242 frames. If we divide this by 24 frames per second, we get 218.375 seconds. From these we can work out the duration in minutes, seconds and frame, which is correct. This is the first frame. We define four regions of interest, or ROIs, around the four circles that illuminate at each beat, ROI 1, 2, 3 and 4. We reduce each ROI from RGB to grayscale and plot these ROIs. We define the time vector by dividing the sample number by the frame rate. We calculate the sum of the intensity within each ROIs for all frames. The sum of the intensity will spike at each beat. We then plot the sums of each ROIs. Because each circle stays illuminated, we just need to extract the moment in which the circle starts illuminating. This corresponds to a positive peak in the differential of the sum signal, where we have the maximum slope. We plot the differential of the sum for each ROIs. Each peak is equally spaced over 1 second, as expected for a metronome running at 60 BPM. We locate the peaks and plot them in red. The peak detection is almost perfect. We show this for the four ROIs. We plot the detected peaks for the four ROIs. These correspond to the instance in which the circles light up. Then we merge these instances into a single vector and uh, we sort its values. This plot includes all beats for all circles. Each peak should be spaced one second. From the differential of the previous graph we can see that there are a few errors in the detection, which we can eliminate. 
Finally, we calculate the average gap between these beads, which is 1, and the standard error, which is almost 0. We now put together the data we extracted for audio and video of the X5R proxy file. These are the bit times for the audio. These are the bit times for the video. We restrict the data to avoid claps from the slate at the beginning and at the end. We create a vector representing the difference between the bits detected in the audio and the ones detected in the video. This is a plot of the difference. It clearly shows that the delay between audio and video accumulates over time. We start with a delay of less than 200 milliseconds and we end with a delay of about 400 milliseconds after 200 seconds of recording. We can fit a trend line to extract the delay rate in milliseconds per second of recorded video. The delay in seconds after 5 minutes of video should be 0.46 seconds or equivalently 11 frames. The delay in seconds after 10 minutes of video should be 0.7 seconds or equivalently 17 frames. As you can read from the Wikipedia page on audio-video sync for television applications, the Advanced Television System Committee recommends that audio should lead video by no more than 15 milliseconds and audio should lag video by no more than 45 milliseconds. However, the ITU performed strictly controlled tests with expert viewers and found that the threshold for detectability is minus 125 milliseconds to plus 45 milliseconds. With the Osmo and the X5R, we are way out of these limits. In addition to these issues, there is one more thing. The X5R proxy and the X5R raw videos do not match in length. Let me show you this in Resolve. As we said, the X5R videos were exported from the SSD card into the PC with a DJI camera exporter. The video we exported, according to this software, lasts 218.886 seconds. However, the proxy video lasts 218.375 seconds. Note that both videos are interpreted as 23.976 frames per second. So in conclusion, I just demonstrated that my Osmo with the X5R camera has uh, multiple serious issues. Audio and video are not synchronized, the delay between audio and video accumulates over time, the delay is 10 times out of the recommended limits for audio video synchronization, the raw videos recorded on the SSD card and the proxy videos recorded on the SD card do not have the same length. Finally, there is a gimbal drift. So I have a question for DJI. Is this an issue that affects all Osmos and all X5R cameras, or is this an issue that affects only my camera? So is my camera faulty, or this is a general program for all cameras? Please let me know, and thanks for watching.